Um, so, uh, so I'm. I told you I'm. So I'm originally a trademark lawyer. I, I got into Amazon um, uh, through clients, through intellectual property and trademark issues, and then I got involved in this entire thing. And today we're a firm of uh, uh, 13 people just doing Amazon suspensions, trademarks, patents, etc. Um, so the things I wanted you to think about when uh, when you enter the U.S. market is a few specific laws that refer to intellectual property. Um, and let's start with trademarks. So trademark, you know, you all know it's it's a brand. It's the protection of your brand. Um, and and when you protect, uh, w when you sell on Amazon, you actually need a trademark. It's very hard to work without it. Um, you want to, you know, if you want to remove hijackers jumping on your listing or you want to prevent others from using your brand, um, you want to have that trademark. Now, a lot of sellers don't know that in the U.S., you have uh, legal rights in your trademark even before you actually file to get it. Um, so um, let's say you chose the, the trademark Nike, but then there's someone that has been using that name for several years in the, se in the same categories. Uh, this one can actually block you. And that's why it's very, very important if you want to sell in the U.S., um, to conduct a search before you, before you choose your trademark, before you actually chose your trademark on the listing, because then later you can change it. Um, Amazon recently changed the rules. And now um, if you're selling on, uh, on Amazon.com and if you have a brand that cannot be registered and you want to change the brand, you cannot do it anymore. Um, so you're stuck with that brand. And that's why I always tell our clients, um, do a search, do a search both on Google or a search on the USPTO. The best is to have a professional do it for you. Um, most of the lawyers actually uh, have that cost included in the registration. So there's not even an extra cost uh, for, for conducting the search. And if you want to do it yourself, you can go on the USPTO. Um, you can see here a screen. Uh, but then if you do it, then make sure you, you get it covered very broadly, not just your specific name, but your name and other names that are uh, confusingly similar, because this is what the, the examiner is looking at. So if I'm summarizing the trademark part, I would just say, you know, remember that uh, um, you have to think about your trademark. You have to think about the, the registration and protection of that brand and make sure you do it before you choose the name and before you start manufacturing so that you won't have to rebrand when, uh, when it's too late. Um, so that was about trademark, something to remember if you're going to sell in the U.S. And also always remember that in the U.S., um, there can be rights of someone else that did not register, but only because that someone else was there before. Um, the second thing that uh, I would wanna, want you to think about is copyrights. Um, so copyrights protect um, graphic designs, they protect photos, um, and they protect text. Okay, these are the, the, the three main things. Um, what's interesting about copyrights in the U.S. and in other countries as well is that you have that protection even without a registration. So if, for example, I, um, you know, I choose this paper plate and this is something that somebody else designed, even if there is no registration uh, for that paper plate, the person who designed it can actually remove my listing like, just like that within a second. Filing a complaint and, and an hour later, it's down and then I'm stuck with the inventory and I cannot sell this product. So what I'm suggesting when it comes to graphic designs, when it comes to images, just have your own images, have your photographer take, take the image. Never, never take uh, an image from, uh, from your supplier, for example. Even if the supplier swears it's his uh, photos and he has the right, never trust it. Just, just do it yourself and, and have your own photographer take the images. Same for graphic designs. Never take a graphic design from your supplier. Just design your own. If you wanna, if you wanna have a plate with a, with a tiger, which uh, by the way I'm seeing now, that it actually looks like my logo here on the on the left side. Um, if you wanna have a, a tiger, then have a tiger, but just you know find a designer on on uh, on Fiverr that will design it for you. Okay, so just remember that. With the copyrights, it's quite easy. Just do not copy uh, images, 
text and graphic designs of somebody else, even text, even, even one sentence, we've seen uh, suspensions for just one sentence that a seller has copied from a competitor on another listing. Um, so just, you know, your listing should be 100% yours and have your own um, copywriters write your, your own text. Um, in the US, uh, we just before we move to patent and wrap up, um, in, the, in the US you have uh, what's called the DMCA. And the DMCA kind of says uh, that you can file a complaint on Amazon, uh, really not only on Amazon, but on any platform quite quickly and quite easily. And then if you file this complaint and you swear and you show that you actually have the right, Amazon has to remove it. Um, so if you, so you have to remember that if you have actually, so going to the other side, if you have a, uh, a copyright, if you have an image that somebody copied, if you have a uh, text that somebody copied, you can go ahead and file a complaint according to the DMCA. If you go on the brand registry, um, on, on Amazon's brand registry, you, you will see a place to kind of file the complaint. You can also have, do it through their own. If you Google, um, Amazon filing uh, trademark complaints, you will be able to file uh, this complaint. So um, the only thing I want you to remember when you file that complaint is be careful not to remove yourself. OK, so when you choose uh, um, if you have, for example, a hijacker on your listing, make sure here on the right when it says scope that you actually choose specific sellers and you choose the one that is infringing. Otherwise, if there's no, if you don't choose specific sellers, what will happen is that uh, Amazon will remove yourself from your own listing. Okay, so be careful about that. That's a, a very common mistake that we see uh, for Amazon sellers. Um, so we spoke about trademarks, we spoke about copyrights, um, and we spoke about the DMCA. I'll just finish with, uh, with patent laws. Um, so two things that you have to know about the U.S., um, you know, if you enter the U.S. market, um, if you have a, uh, design of your own, let's say that you design this, uh, this bottle here, um, you have one year from the moment that you publish this, uh, this product, meaning from the moment that you start selling it or someone saw it online. Uh, from that moment, you have one year to file it and protect it. Um, so um, if and that's only in the US and Europe. But if uh, if you're filing in other countries, for example, if you want to protect it in, in China or, um, you know, or in Israel or whatever, you have to file before it's published. OK, so now I'm focusing only on the US. In the US, you have one year from the moment you started publishing it. So remember that. Um, remember that in the US you have patents, utility patents, and you have design patents. Design patents cover uh, the shape of the products and utility patents kind of cover the technology behind it. So it's usually broader. Um, on Amazon, we will usually see Amazon sellers protecting uh, a design patent because they're, they usually invent a new shape and not a completely new product. Um, so if, again, if you have a new shape of your product, um, think about protecting it. And if you took somebody else's shape, um, make sure you conduct a search um, to, to see that this person or this company has not covered uh, this specific shape so that you won't be infringing their patents. So you can go, um, you know, the best way is obviously to take a professional, uh, hire a professional. I know that, you know, some of our clients have been using uh, the Google patent search, it's not easy, but it gives you an initial idea. So before maybe you hire a professional, do your own search and sometimes you'll kill it just by, you know, dealing, uh, doing your own search. So for, for this pr particular product here, for example, uh, I wanted to sell a, a, a bottle that use that looks like the Camelback uh, bottle. Um, so I just went to Google patent, I wrote Camelback, and then I saw these are all the patents they have and boom, I found that, that you know, that uh, design patent. So it means I cannot sell this particular design because uh, they have a design patent over it. Um, so if I'm summarizing the patent part, um, be careful not to uh, infringe somebody else's patent. 
and for that um, if you're taking somebody else's design then conduct a search um, and try to change it as much as you can so that you want uh, resemble or use features of, of that design and if you design your own make sure you protect it so that others uh, will not uh, copy your design um, so, so that's about it I mean there's compliance but uh, Tiffany is an expert and I think she kind of covered uh, the, this topic very thoroughly um, and you know and in particular when you're in to in the toys category or anything related to children uh, remember that there's heavy compliance there and you have to make sure you have the, the CPC and other mandatory testing um, so that's it. Um, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help.